This is a follow-up to my video on the diamagnetic motor. If you haven't seen it, you might want to watch it first so that this video will make more sense to you. I'd like to thank everyone who commented on the first video and offered suggestions on how to set up a better method to rotate the pyrolytic graphite rotor. I tried out several different ideas. These are some of the ones that I tried. None of them were able to produce better or even similar results to the ones produced by using the string. So I decided to take a closer look at the results produced by the string and show you exactly what stood out about the string in the first place. Most string or thread is produced by winding several thinner pieces of string together to strengthen it. So there's nothing surprising about seeing a weighted object spinning when you hang it from a string. That's actually not what caught my attention when I decided to share the information in my first video. Before I explain that though, here's an example of what you'd see if you hung an object from a piece of string. In this case, I'm using the actual rotor I used for my first video. As you can see, it begins spinning as soon as you lift it up. I'm going to speed up the footage so you can see the end result simply because it's going to take over 30 minutes for the string to unwind to a dead stop. You'll notice it unwinds, then turns and winds itself in the other direction and continues this back and forth motion until it finally comes to a stop. I'm going to use the exact same rotor and string to demonstrate the different results you get by placing them above a stator assembly composed of permanent magnets. Again, speeding up the footage, this time you'll notice that instead of the rotor changing direction after it unwinds, it simply stops after a few seconds of starting to reverse its rotation. So the magnets are obviously affecting the rotor, that goes without saying.
What's interesting is if you manually attempt to spin it in the other direction to unwind it the other way, it will continue in this direction for a few seconds and then turn right back around and spin counterclockwise until it comes to a stop. This was what caused me to share my findings from the initial video in the first place. Upon further study, I find that there are only two explanations for this. One, the design of the rotor is causing it to spin in that direction, or two, because of the way the string is wound together when it's manufactured, once it unwinds as far as it can counterclockwise, the magnets hold the diamagnetic parts of the rotor in place. Regardless, because the effect can't be replicated without the string, this particular design isn't functional enough to merit further experimentation at this time. I'll probably keep the rotor assembled in case I decide to try some different magnet orientations at a later date. But other than that, I'm going to set this project aside for now. In my last video, I mentioned that I had a theory as to how this works if it's actually working. My favorite definition of theory is a supposition established upon ignorance of the subject under discussion. Nobody mentioned this in the comments section of part 1, but it occurred to me while I was testing different methods of rotating the assembly that the only way to really test this model using the string is to set it aside from the magnets and let the string completely unwind before placing it over the stator assembly. When I did this, I noticed no movement in either direction when placing it over the stator assembly. So I gave it a spin, first counterclockwise, then clockwise, repeating the same unwinding process before giving the rotor a spin in the opposite direction and the results were conclusive. It doesn't work. Now why would I debunk my own video? Because I want my subscribers to know that I'll always be honest with them. If I make a mistake, I'll stop and correct myself. If you're pursuing science, you need to be prepared to alter course if you're wrong and make corrections. My longtime viewers will note that there have been times I respectfully disagreed with some of the leading experts in the area of alternative energy. There are times I've debunked other people's video presentations, and there are times I've come right out and said that certain devices that people presented were fake. My own research is not above the same scrutiny. I'll always try to give my viewers the most accurate information I have at the time. If I later learn new information that contradicts the original information, I will correct course and share that information as well. Your trust is more important to me than my pride. Pride has no place in research. I'm after accurate results so that I can pass on what I learn to my viewers and anyone interested enough to listen. Thanks for watching and do great things.